Where we at right now? We in L.A. We in Beverly Hills. Okay, we are. We in Beverly so we, Hills, we could, definitely. We, we could probably take a walk. To some pimping. You it's, dig what I'm saying? It's real close. <laughs> <laughs> it's active right now in yeah. this neighborhood. It's active. Yes, sir. This tip T.I. Harris, man, and the following experience is not a test. The conversations and stories expressed on this podcast are meant to be an expression of purpose and truth. This show, properly entitled Expeditiously, is a free exchange of ideas and opinions. No judgment, no preconceived belief, and no fear. Now, I encourage everybody on here, man, to share their thoughts and ask any questions as long as it's done with respect. Is because it's through ah, because it's only through true love and respect for others that we will change the world and speak truth to power one show at a time. Now this is expeditiously, and I am Tip T. I. Harris. Now. I guess for the day is Oakland's original out the trunk tape slinger, hailing from the streets of East Oakland. He is a legendary pioneer, a pimp pioneer of West Coast rap, gangster rap music, you know what I mean? It is said that he was the first West Coast rapper to appear on the scene in 1980. That when I was born. Uh, that's the year of the pimps, I guess. And was inspired by Melly Mel to write stories about Oakland, man. He gained street notoriety by selling tapes to drug dealers around Oakland who rose to fame and were later boycotted and met parental protests for everything under the sun. Uh, from obscene lyrics to women performing oral sex on stage during his shows, we would definitely have to talk about that. <laughs> I'm talking about the man whose actions 35 years ago, man, would still break the internet today. I'm talking about a man who's a true innovator of the culture. I'm talking about none other than Mr. Two Shout. Shout dog. Hey, man, welcome to Expeditiously, man. Oh, yeah, glad to be here, man. What's up, what's up? Man, ain't nothing to it, bro. Just, you know what I'm saying, got, got me a platform to talk my shit, man, uninterrupted. Well, yeah, I was, I was listening to you read that, and I just, I, it just sounded like a lot of hard work to me, man. You, <laughs> you, you, you put in, a, you put in a hustle, never stop hustling. That's, that's what, that's what we do. Hey, man, that's right, bro. I mean, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what this shit is built on, man. Blood, mm-hmm. sweat, and tear, man. Cre- building up experiences, man, and sharing it with the world. Uh, and I see it's a lot of firsts. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you were the first to do a lot of shit that motherfuckers probably don't know about. Yeah. Um, they say you were the first to use bitch in a record. No doubt about it. I mean, I was I was the first rapper, definitely, to take on a pimp persona and say I'm a pimp bitch yeah. and like talk to the bitch and you know directly yeah. spitting game at it. And like like the what was coming through the speakers, man. People were telling me that um, they're like, bro, you can't put this out. <laughs> and I'm like, why? They like nobody. They won't put it in the stores. Like nothing. Like, but you know, um, and that's when you knew it was perfect. Exactly. Like, I, that was that was the whole Freaky Tales thing. They said. Um, this can't be done. Mm. And I'm like, man, like the, the song was too long. Right. It had too much bass in it. It was like five minutes and 30 no, something no, seconds. No, no, no. That song was like 11 minutes long. You talking about the, oh, for Born the, the Mac? The, the ori- original Freaky The original. Tale. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I put a street version out before that was that was like 15 minutes long. <laughs> when, when the rap stopped, I let the beat play for another three minutes. <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> Shit, but yeah, man. That, that's all it is, though, man. You know, like you said, doing it first. That's just yeah, man. Trailblazing. First and fast, you understand? Trailblazing. Then, and, and as you just mentioned, Man, they say that uh, that you were the first to like take on a true pimp persona, like the hip hop's iceberg slim. You did, no doubt. And uh, I was I was all into that too, though, man. Like everywhere you could absorb, because I I, I spent my young years in L.A. and L.A. is a kind of territorial city where you go right. from block to block, and it's like owned by the, the you know the yeah the this hood. one that one that cats in the hood, yeah. You. So you know you you got to know your politics of where right. to be and where you can't be. Sure. So um, I get to Oakland. I moved to Oakland like ninth grade, and it's a whole different vibe up in Oakland. It's like the streets is wide open. Right. Players is walking down the street, right, driving down the street with their girls in the back, and it's like it's a smaller town, so yeah. so it's not so, uh, you know. Segregated. Like, yeah, exactly. Like you can, like, float around and, and right. walk by and see and see the girls working or, or go down a certain street and, you know, see the hustles at the park or whatever yeah. without uh, without being gang-banging and gang-influenced. Right. So, um. Man, it just it just was a different world to me, man. I just seeing it up close and colorful. Just when I started writing songs, and <laughs> I, I got a hold of that message, Melly Mel. Right. I was like, this is what I'm doing. I'm I'm actually I I think I'm gonna tell the story of Oakland. Yeah. And that that was my whole uh, premise to my whole career was just telling the stories about Oakland. I think that's I think that's incredibly important, man. Because because as a storyteller. You know, forget what you're telling the story about, but mm-hmm. just as a storyteller, you paint such a vivid picture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Of of what the life of a pimp is like. You know what I'm saying? How how the lifestyle carries over. You know, even even 
I guess, off the track, if you will. Yeah, the politics of it, the ins yeah. and out of it, the, the, the why. The, so many people don't understand the why of it. Well, could you please explain it to them? Uh, I mean, there's, there's certain, certain situations that you might end up in where we, we think that um, pimping on the surface is some dude in a suit who's making some girl do something she don't want to do. Right, right. That's the little bad image on the surface. Right. You can laugh at the dude in the suit, you know, however he's acting. You want to you treat him like a clown. Right. But at a certain point in time, when I was coming up in the game, even that look, that suit, that, that matching whatever, right. that was that was. That, that was, was fly. That was, yeah. up, you know, so so later on when I'm coming up as a rapper uh-huh. and you try, you know, crack kind of changed our communities and things like a, a, a cool pimp who started using crack turned into like a kind of joke because he's still right. his car getting run down, his suit looking funny. And we we turned it into a clown image, but the game kept going. Right. So, you, you know, when I was coming up, you got like young pimps who like and, and to this day who didn't try to wear a suit or didn't right. try to talk in rhymes or, or didn't try to have a flashy, super fly car. They just got the money. And I and the, the why of it is, you know, you get you get lured into the lifestyle because you see it's easy money. That's right. But then you're like, well, why is she doing it? And you're like, I'm not making her do this. Nobody's making her do that. Right on. She, she came across some uh, life decisions to make, and she made the choice. That's right. And it might have been, people don't like this part, but it might have been a good choice for her at that time. <laughs> They don't like that. That's the part they don't understand. Why, how are you telling me you ain't making her do it? I'm like, man, the mathematics might have made sense. Her her situation I might mean, have been worse. Well, listen, man, I think in everything, all things in life, there can be no good without bad, no bad without good. So what, what I did as a, as a songwriter, I went up in, in the trenches. I made friends with pimps and hoes. Okay. And I got the stories. I, I, I One of my favorite things I used to do, man, I used to like to talk to a lot of Homeless cats. Yeah. And ask them, you know, what, what happened on the journey, man? Like, you know, and you get these great stories. Yeah. And I also used to ask a lot of hoes, why, why are you a hoe? That's that's a that's a lot of rap records right there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> See, I mean, you bring me to a very important point because you being, I guess, the first to, to, to really document the lifestyle of a pimp, I guess this would be an appropriate question for you. How did pimping die? You know what I mean? Like, what killed pimping? You, you mentioned crack. Yeah. But then you also had technology, you know what I'm saying, webcams and so on and so forth. Because people been selling pussy for, since, since, since a pussy was been, been here to sell. No doubt. You dig what I'm saying? But now, I guess, it has such a negative connotation to it because, as you said before, people feel like there's a man that's kind of exploiting a woman and making her. But now women are pretty much doing it. Well, in the themselves. days of social media, yeah, they've they've learned to uh, be self uh, efficient, and <laughs> you, you you can you can uh, you know you can get on Instagram and, and use code words. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know it's a lot of talented models out there, but it's a lot of chicks that got bookings on Instagram. Yeah, that booking in bio, getting flew that and chew that. <laughs> <laughs> Flew that, chewed that, threw that. So yeah, you got um, you got things like uh, you used to get like um, these little charges, man. Uh, that that would, you know, rise up to something like pimping and pandering, right? Which would get you in a little trouble. But there's a bunch of little other stuff that wasn't so detrimental. And yeah, and you know, uh, a pimp would say stuff like, uh, "I'm getting uh, felony money, but I'm only committing misdemeanors." You know what I'm saying? Cause right. It was no trouble to tell the bitch, you know. Holding your hand out, right? Basically, you just hand it to you. That's not. That's not a crime. That's voluntary. So, um, I think uh, when it changed uh, to like uh, human trafficking, by, yeah, uh, white slavery, by, and your, all your that your kind chick of just shit. saying, "Oh, he's my pimp, and he makes me do this." That's, right. That, like that don't even got to be the case. She just right. get mad one day and say that. Yeah. You catch human trafficking if she if she pushed the issue, you know. Yeah. So you know, I think a lot of guys um. Uh, are are not for that life, but then on the other side, bro, I'm telling you, man, the risk overwhelmed the reward at that point. I'm telling you, it never stops selling, and the lifestyle never goes away. And the places where it was always popping is still popping, it's still going. I mean, it's it's uh it's we can go where, where we at right now. We in L.A. We in Beverly Hills. Okay, we are. We in Beverly so we, Hills. We could, definitely, we, we could probably take a walk. To some pimping. You it's, dig what I'm saying? It's real close. <laughs> <laughs> it's active right now in yeah. this neighborhood. It's active. Man, you know what, man? A uh, 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 old, uh, uh, old retired pimp I was locked up with, man, he told me, say, young blood, you can blindfold me, spin me around a thousand times, stop me, point me right there. I'm going to get me a hoe and break her down. For you real? know what I'm saying? For like, real. It's the, I think that kind of, I think that kind of slick talk, man, you know, those are, uh, I think that, 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 
it derives from our culture. That kind of sauce that we put on shit, man. Mm-hmm. They can't get that nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? Now, however you choose to use that, whether it's to, in, whether it's to convince a woman or, or, or to, you know, to, to swindle somebody out of some money as a con man, whatever that is, it's that sauce right there that allows us to turn something from nothing. It's in the DNA, man. You could you could you could flash back to some African tribe hundreds of years ago. Absolutely. And a nigga like you and me got a, <laughs> we, we know the baddest bitch in the village is the chief's daughter. And what That's you gonna right. do to get that? What you gonna do to get her? You gotta finesse. Yes, <laughs> you got to finesse yes, and sir. finagle, man. You, you need some goats and some <laughs> 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 You're gonna need some things before you yeah. go holler at the chief. Absolutely. So you gotta be uh, that guy. Man Another thing that I found, man, incredibly interesting. Mind you, I'm a too short fan. You dig what I'm saying, bro? Like, like, like I think one of the first tapes that I got, <laughs> my uncle got me, Life Is Too Short. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? What, that, like 86? Something like that? 87, yeah. Uh, it, no, it, it was like 89, 89. Okay. Life is too short, right. 89. Well, listen, man. That shit opened my eyes to a whole new motherfucking world. I ain't even gonna lie to you. And if you connect the dots up to... 95, I think, mm-hmm. 95, 96, you were actually the first celebrity that I ever met. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the hood. In the hood, Thank man. The, 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 the apartments we used to trap at, we used to trap out of on Camelton Road, man, next door was a plaza, and Shout used to get a haircut <laughs> in the plaza. And, 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 and <laughs> no security, you know what I'm saying, pulling up, getting a haircut, you know what I'm saying, kicking shit, shooting dice, talking shit with the guys. And, you know, I'd be back and forth from the store to the apartments, you know, uh, running my little twos and fuse. And everybody used to always tell me, man, rap for Shout, rap for Shout. I'm like, man, I ain't rapping for that, man. That man ain't <laughs> Come here for that. You know what I mean? And then fast forward to say 99, 2000, you were actually the first feature uh, on the I'm Serious project. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know what I mean? And, and it, you know, KP was the homie, and, uh, yeah. and the way he ran it down to me. You know, I was like, okay, I didn't, I didn't even know the connection at the time. Right. I just did it on, you know, KP's a solid guy. And the way he ran it down, I'm like, I, I fuck with the young homie, let's do it. Yeah. But then you came back later and told me all these stories. I'm like, damn, no. <laughs> like, like, it's, been, it's been that close all this time. But, you know, I um, listened to the song Blow the Whistle. Okay. And I name drop in the song. I, I, dro- I name drop Mac, Mac Dre. I say your name. I say Snoop. Right on. I say uh, MJG and 8 Ball. And I, I say, um, UGK, right on. And I just named all them because I'm like I'm, I'm I'm naming rappers who have been consistently representing the game, right on. Sort of the pimp game, right. The whole time, like not playing against it at any time, right. And I just like you know, I, it's just a, it was a little, little homage to the to the man, to, I, to my peers. I salute, respect, and appreciate. Uh, the acknowledgement, man, and, and it means so much coming from. But even when I did the feature, I didn't know you was gonna be gamed up like that. <laughs> and then, and then when you went in on him, see, I'm I'm like lined up with you. I'm fucking with KP. And when you went in on it, right after that, you went in on yeah. everybody. You said <laughs> you just went, you just woke up one day and said, "I'm the king." Yeah, and they was like. Nigga, what about so and so? What about? What about hey, been around long? It was, it was, First it was, thing I said was if they believed it, they'd have said it. Hey, but the the rest of the world took it in the PR fashion. And right. It came out big, but in Atlanta, it it was it, it simmered around. That's right. And nigga stepped up and said, "I'm, I'm the king." Yeah. And niggas, it, it was it was some local politics. Yeah, man. I mean, but you know, the one thing that I did do during that time is I approached all the people who I felt. I respect it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I spoke to 3000. I spoke to Big Boy. I spoke to Cujo, Gibbs. Mm-hmm. You know, like all the people I respect. It. And all of them said the same thing. Man, shit, man, say that shit, bro. I ain't tripping. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, if they ain't tripping, what the fuck I care about y'all? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the fuck I care about what the fuck y'all got to say? Y'all gonna have to respect it or check it. Uh, and you mentioned UGK, man. I'm also mm-hmm. a UGK fan. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Shout Dog, Outcast, UGK, Eight Ball, MJ, man. You know what I'm saying? Like they, like they really, really like. I feel like they raised me, man. Scarface, through, yeah. Also Scarface mm-hmm. through the headphone, man. Like no, like ain't no cap on that. Uh, I have an incredible Pimp C story, but I'm sure you have more than me. You okay, know what I'm yeah. saying? I would I, love I like to, my little bro. Yeah, man. I would love to exchange a Pimp C story, <laughs> man. What? So what's what, what? What's your most elaborate Pimp C story that you could think of? I, I I like to tell the story about um about the big pimping video. Okay. Uh, and Pimp C is in the Miami scenes. Gotcha. You, you'll see Bun B on the float in Trinidad kicking it with Jay Z. Right. Lakers. They having a ball. <laughs> I got a little cameo in the video because I was with Pimp C. We in Atlanta, and they calling. 
he don't he was he he didn't want to do the song. <laughs> now it's time to do the video. He being pimp C, he don't yeah. want to do the video. Right. He just got this brand new hundred thousand dollar Benz. Right. He's in a good mood. Right. And he's still on this Tupac shit. Like you know, like right. Like man, them niggas in like Tupac. I ain't fucking with them. Like he kept saying that shit. So he was. He was, uh, you know, feeling this stuff. He was, feeling, you know, it was, it was, he would it be was a PMC. PMC moment in life. So it was my job not to like tell him, bro, come on, we're going to, let's go. But I had to kind of convince him, get him to go to the video. He so, had to finesse it. So my whole look was like, I look like I just got me a new Porsche, man. Let's uh, let's take the new whips down to Miami. Fuck, we're going to make, make it a road trip. We go down there, and we we went down there. We y'all we, nigga drove to Miami from Atlanta. We we went to Miami. <laughs> we get down there. We do the video. And then it's like, you know, sometimes you, I know you didn't do this with your homies, man. You get there and you're like, me, will stay another day. Yeah, absolutely. And another day ended up being like two, three weeks. Damn. And C found these niggas, um, he found these little young niggas that had, um, he was like, shout, get over here to this studio. These little niggas got a bunch of molded money and, <laughs> and they spending it. <laughs> we in Miami, right? These little yeah. niggas, I don't know what they, where they dug this money up. This shit stunk. It was some stinking ass, <laughs> wet, old, wet, soggy. And niggas, but it's spent. Them niggas, I think they gave me about fourteen thousand and like five dollar bills. What? We, we was on a mission to just spend them shits. Like that's we, right. That's why we stayed. Like we spending this molded money. We kicked it. So it was me, Pimp C. We uh, I feel like we uh went to that front desk of that hotel. Like man, another day, another, another day, another, another day. day. <laughs> we ain't leaving. <laughs> but that was one of them trips, man. I, that's, that's the one, the moment I cherished because we fucking balled the fuck out. We that's dope. we shopped and we kicked it and we. We fucked on bros, and we just we did everything you wanted to do man, as, as a motherfucking popular ass rapper, you know. That's dope as fuck, man. My 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 pimp C story, man. Uh, and this was before I even met pimp. You know what I'm saying? I was just a kid in the studio. I was known as the little the, the little bad ass tilt with the big ass gun. That's how <laughs> that how motherfuckers used to call me out when they before they knew who I was for real. So I was hanging around the studio, me and my partner Doug, probably uh, at noon time mm-hmm. with old uh, Meezy. And, and, and uh, Noonie and all them. Jazzy, Jazzy Faye. Jazzy Faye and them, absolutely. And I just happened to be standing outside, uh, and it was a car running. Uh, uh, it was a Benz, as a matter of fact. Old Coop. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Black Coop, the 600 motherfucker. And so the car was running. We weren't paying no attention. Uh, I think we might have been standing outside smoking, just kicking it. And then uh, another rapper or a friend of a rapper, who, who shall remain nameless, he walking up to the car and kind of like trying to look in and like looking at like, damn, this car dope. Trying to look in and then he kind of like put his hands on, <laughs> on the, the driver window on the <laughs> glass, right? <laughs> I seen that window roll down. No lie, saw it off double barrel shotgun right on that man's nose. Say, what's happening, fool? <laughs> <laughs> damn. And that's how I met Pimp C. Yeah, you know changed. what I'm saying? That was my first physical encounter with Pimp C. And I said, man, this shit real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember one night we had a C at a, we, we went to, we went, me and a couple of homies went to one of his shows. It okay. Was, I think it was, it, I don't know if Bun was out or not. I, I think, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the, the, the time the timeline, but we had, right. a, we had a show. Okay. And it's, it's UGK and it's, um, Attic crew, got you. So it's like um, that attic crew had different groups. They had a uh, it, it was it was Polo and them group. Oh, uh, that was uh, and Jim Sean, Crow and Sean Paul and them. Then Young Blood. Okay, so they all on the show, right? And it's they, you know how that attic crew when they was thick, yeah. When they was on, they rolled thick, right? Right. And, and attic crew was founded and you know what I'm saying put together by Pretty Ken, who was also on the show yesterday. When they did a show, them niggas was fifty, sixty deep, right on. They, they always came big old country niggas, just just. <laughs> Five niggas in a group of 50, 45 niggas hanging. That's right. So Pimp C, the show was over and everybody was backstage. So we all we all fam. Okay. I fuck with all them niggas. We like, you know, I'm in Atlanta at the time. And I'm, right. I know a whole bunch of them niggas, like, personally. So Pimp C started yelling. Um, he thought Sean Paul uh, was rap like him. So uh, he, he always, uh, Pimp C always was mad at Sean Paul for the for the voice or something. Yeah. So he was saying, um, nigga, fuck these niggas. Blah, 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 fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. And, then, and so we looking like, me and the homie look like, hey, what is what is he saying? Like, <laughs> so I'm like, nigga, if you don't get this nigga out of here, this nigga about to break this nigga limbs off. We, we literally, like, see, don't back down. Right. So he about to start it. Like, a, a probably, like, this might be 
I come with seeing them. It's probably like seven, eight of us. Right. It's 50 of them niggas. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, you can't start this in here like that. <laughs> we get into the car. I yeah. mean, the second they walked them out the door, somebody said, was he talking about us? We like, nah, Ray was just talking. Hey, <laughs> nah, nah. hey but I don't know if it was this night, but it was another night that uh, uh, UGK was on stage That nigga don't bite his tongue. And he said very, he made very derogatory remarks about Sean Paul on stage. He did that by Master P. He did it by a lot of people. Yeah, he man. did. He did. He did. He did. Uh, <clears throat> he used to he used to live up to Sean Paul and them pulled up, and you know <laughs> they. I'm talking about in a matter of minutes. It, it seemed like as soon as they got out the stage. Ken and them were walking in the door like, man, what happened? Where they at? <laughs> I'm like, man, bro, I don't, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad that shit got resolved. It seemed like when we were young, everything seemed so goddamn, uh, uh, it was magnified of such larger importance than I, right now. I kind of feel like it's the same thing the young homies going through now, though. It, you think they, so? They, they just got a tool called social media so it can travel in a different manner. Right. But it still was that, uh, it still was that pull up. It was still was whatever, you know, it right. was, it was. It was it was tension, right? And then you, a, a wise man to step in and kind of solve it or not, but whatever. It was the same. Or to solve itself. Sometimes time allows shit. You know what I'm saying? Time and separation will allow shit to kind of dissipate. I feel like you got to do it though, man. You gotta, yeah, you, you got to. Uh, if everybody agree with what you're doing, you ain't doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, for sure. If you ain't ruffling no feathers, man, upsetting nobody, man, about what you're doing, I mean, you ain't doing shit. But I'm so glad. I, I could enjoy a rap career a, a substantial for a substantial amount of time without social media. Word. I'm so glad I was able to be a celebrity. I'm glad I got a taste of it, too. A celebrity. Before with, camera phones. Yeah, exactly. Be, before social media, period. That was just, it was just a thing where people didn't have a camera all right. the time. So they, they were like, if I had a camera, I'd take a picture. But right. you ain't got a damn camera on you. Man, that if shit I had a pen, i get an autograph. You ain't got no fucking pen on that you. That shit pissed me off more than anything, man. I think whoever invented the camera phone, they need to be goddamn kicked in the ass. Yeah, you that, know what I'm saying? That, that was a pretty shitty invention. Yeah, that was that was horrible, man. You know, that, that was so fucking selfish of them. But a camera phone <laughs> was, was cool, but now with, with, with social media attached to it, it's all right. Now it. you get fame for it. Instant uploading and shit. Damn. Yeah, paparazzi and all kinds of media, a uh, fake ad media platform that will encourage motherfuckers to be uh, private eye investigators for no rough, for no fucking reason. Yeah, you know I mean. But you know, I think on the flip side to, to how I uh, used to walk the streets, uh huh, and walk up to every dope dealer, every group of dope dealers trying right. to sell a tape, right. Shit, it would have been so lovely to have the internet back then. <laughs> Man, you know what I'm saying? I would have did. I would have did that street hustle, but I would have been online. But just too, imagine like, <laughs> how many people you could have motherfucking read. Cause you sold what, like a hundred fifty thousand out the trunk, right? Yeah, but I would would just, just just you hand just, to hand, I, just buying boxes and, and you, selling them. Man, imagine if you could have put that shit on the net and reached London or Paris or motherfucking I, all these other places. I'd be shipping to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and now you brought up a great point because you said, man, pretty much, man, it was the same uh, generation of gap. Uh, and the misunderstanding amongst the generations then as it is now. But to me, and I'm going back to my experiences, like when I met you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, when I encountered you, when I encountered Big Boy, when I encountered uh, Gip and Cujo and Timo and them, like it didn't feel like, oh, I think them niggas against me. No, no, or, no. Something, you see what I'm saying? Something had to happen. Right. For somebody to, to become the enemy. Something had Absolutely. to be a real incident. It couldn't just be like, oh, I don't like y'all across the room. It yeah. Was, hip hop wasn't like that. I never felt like a motherfucker was on some. Man, what the fuck is this? Why, why them young niggas doing shit like that? So I don't understand why now it's such a divide. I don't really get that for real. You know what I mean? I think that, I think you guys, y'all generation, Y'all accepted us, if at least I feel like I was accepted with open arms. You know what I, I mean? was raised on, if you got beef with a rapper, anybody, anything, yeah. the last thing you want to do is talk about it <laughs> or rap about it. Like, you want to, you want to just, you want it to just happen. That's real. Like, that, like man. You know what I'm saying? We, we squashed a lot of beef just by being face to face. Right. Like, bro, like, it, it's not about to be a rap thing, bro. It's about to be like us and y'all. Yeah. They're like, nah, man. It's like, whatever it be, like, we just end up being homies and we let that shit go. We don't, we wasn't, we wasn't really like escalating to the point of, you know, like, my homies wouldn't even let me like if I even if I wanted to take a side in the East Coast, West Coast, right? right. Matter, they'd be like, nigga, we from Oakland, nigga. What you talking about? Ain't nobody, <laughs> what are you talking about? You about to jump in on the on the rap battle? I think, man, but like as a as an elder statesman and a self proclaimed old ass rapper, yeah, you know what I'm saying. How could you advise somebody like me? You know what I'm saying? As a 
like better politics of how to kind of uh, communicate better and understand the next generation better? What's your formula? I feel like um, a lot of people needed what we call kingpins. Right. We don't use that word a lot anymore. Kingpin was like the unofficial mayor of the neighborhood. The was gatekeeper. The, was the boss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who could who could bring justice. Right. Or or the opposite, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know, so I think when we like made kingpin a really bad thing, we made kingpin a life sentence. Kingpin right. get 40 years. It was really just leadership. It, and, and that that you was a part saying? of it. But, yeah. you, you know, it was it was a crime being involved and whatever, whatever. But I'm saying Sometimes. We, we took away that leadership. Yeah. So Semantics. Those are just, you know, minor details. So I'm on that mind frame where in the days of a kingpin, you don't call the police. That's right. You call the kingpin and say, man, I'm, it's, it's about to be some stuff on you, in your neighborhood between me and old, old boy over there. Yeah. Can it be? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get right. the yay of the name. You had to be sanctioned. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, we lost that. Right. Ain't nobody. If if I I don't really know of a lot of cats that got that. Yeah. You might have had it over your crew, but it, cats used to have that over a whole side of town. Yeah. Over a whole neighborhood. Over a whole city. And now it's just renegade motherfucker running around yeah, doing so, kamikaze shit. So I squashed a lot of stuff in my day by immediately asking my OGs and your OGs, can we can can we can we can we, can we, can we have a war? <laughs> and they like, what's the what's what is it about? Nah, yeah. y'all can't do it, right? Or, or they'll they you know the council, and then you and then you have to squash that shit. And and we don't take that time right now through social media and through you know just that. I, I like to think you know it's, it's a lot more than just social media, bro. We talking about um, the kids of all these, you know. Could have been drug users, drug dealers, people that got right. murdered, right. people that got caught in the net. Right. Uh, the um, you know, the, the war, crack era, the war on crime, the, the war, war on drugs, the war on drugs. That yeah. that whole little you know mass incarceration, big old picture. Right. And these, we, you got all these kids. You can sit them down right now and say, say, how many of y'all grew up with your mom and daddy? And then you know they're gonna start fractions. Talking. I've grew up with my mama. I grew up with my daddy. I didn't. I grew up with my auntie. I grew up with my, my big brother. Whatever. Yeah. And, it, and it starts breaking down to you. To a whole group of kids that go, I didn't grow up with nobody. We we raised ourselves, right? So it's like, why, why would I listen to an OG telling me to think about it? Fuck thinking about it. That nigga made me mad. I'm about to go get him. <laughs> so it's just like that. Ain't no, the the, the 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 rules is gone. You know, the gang banging used to have like hand me down generation to generation rules, and a lot of that's a lot of the, you know a lot of cats going now, man. You know they like. Nigga, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an OG killer too, nigga. So. That's real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's real. So, I mean, that's what we got. To, we got to get back to the respect. You know what I'm saying? That was because you respected those those you, leaders so you, much. You got little dudes who probably got it in them right now to be a leader. Right. But what's the cost of being a leader if you're gonna be a hood leader? That's real. You know real. what I'm saying? You're gonna be you gonna get that kingpin time. That's real. That's, I mean, well, you know what? I think those leadership qualities can be applied to do to to different. Uh, how do you say like legitimate, talents? Like legitimate business? By legitimate means. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Even if, for instance, one of those kids could take those those same talents he had and, and, and be a young Huey P. Newton. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And start the Black Panthers or another organization that could really, you know, yeah, I, I feel like all those rich dope dealers of the 80s and 90s was, was CEOs. They That's was, real. They was, they was executives. Absolutely. I say this shit all the time, man. I say, goddamn, really... The war on drug, the crack era, as horrible as it was, the epidemic tore down the community and dismantled families and incarcerated people, stole lives, definitely. But it also, as I said before, there could be no bad without good and vice versa. It also allowed us an opportunity to understand business. Mm -hmm. You understand? Understand manufacturing, distribution, understand, you know, like just, just, uh, profit loss, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just different areas of business that we would never have the opportunity to be included in had it not been for the crack era. And I use the specific example. Take Easy E, right? Right. Easy was a, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a Compton neighborhood dope dealer, right? Okay, he had a homeboy. Easy didn't have no dream. He just wanted to be the best dope dealer he could be, you know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. had the means to do it. Uh, his homeboy had a dream. His homeboy dream was to be a DJ and a record producer. Mm -hmm. Easy to say, well, shit, that what you want to do? I believe in you. I got this money. I'm going to invest in you. All right? So yeah. him selling dope allowed him the opportunity to invest in Dr. Dre, which then brought about uh, NWA and changed, you know, the narrative on the West Coast, for, you know, just politically and in other ways. And now Dr. Dre is a billionaire. 
And yeah. that started from the money that Easy was able to subsidize through his drug business. Well, you know, I, I, Easy is the, is is a, is one of my heroes because right. I understand the the tree of hip hop, the family right. tree. If you take him out the equation, a lot of shit wouldn't exist. Take it, just just imagine that. Like this, is, not a lot, not a lot of people in hip hop have the the branches that he has. Right, and his branches are um, Ice Cube, absolutely, Dr. Dre, absolutely. Eminem, Fifty Cent. Yeah, you know I mean, don't exist if he don't come, if he don't come in the game. Bone Thugs and Harmony. That's cold. You know what I'm saying? Goes, <laughs> the, the list is long though. Yeah, that's cold. Of very man. significant contributions to hip hop that didn't come directly from him. That that, but they came because of him. That's right. You know what, man? And, and you being a true hip hop pimp pioneer. Now, a lot of people may not know that when you started rapping back in the day, that police were stopping your shows for obscenities. And mm -hmm. we talk a lot about, you know what I'm saying, uh, Uncle Luke and Band in the USA, but, you know, people were boycotting your shows and shit because you was, uh, uh, you had girls giving, giving oral sex on stage and shit like that. Things would happen. Things would happen. And you, um, it wasn't really so much as they would be out for too short around the country, but right. if I'm, if I'm, about to do a show in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right. And it's 1990, and it's the Bible Bell name. Really right. seen a lot of hip hop. They, it's it's a it's an issue. Yeah. It's some church folk getting together, and they like something bad is about to happen to our kids. Like, and they something bad I, about to. Okay, but yet and still, they can be behind the scene living the life of polygamy, and you know uh, what I'm saying, well, doing yeah. all they shit that they doing, but they don't want you to be in the auditorium saying what you want to say. Yeah, you, you that's some bullshit. Well, you, you know, you know, it's the Bible Bell, man. But it was it was places like that. Even I'd be up in like. Maybe like the Northwest in some small town in the state of Washington. Right. And they like, I, I remember doing a show that was sold out. Okay. I get my money and the audience is empty. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> a sold out show in an empty audience? And they right. like, they like the parents. It's like a really strict, like religious community. Uh -huh. They like the parents told the kids if they go, then, you know, they already bought the tickets so they can't refund them. But they, they, Damn. they their parents. Made a picket line outside and they couldn't cross it. But shit, that shit just made it even bigger. I done been to shows where they told the audience they was like, okay, um, basically they said we don't we don't want you you can watch it but you can't like it. So they you say, can um, watch it but you can't like the it. The rules the rules at the show was everybody has to sit in their seat. <laughs> no one can stand up and you can't cheer or, or do any of that. If I go say ho, oh, they can't say it back. Damn. So they just did the show. They 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 had to quietly love it. They had to quietly live it. Man, that, we didn't been arrested right off stage. For real? Oh, for yeah. what? What was the charge? It was always for uh, using obscene language in front of uh, a public crowd or something like that. Like, that shit against the law? In cities like Savannah, Georgia, like it was always some you know, Cincinnati, Ohio, everybody's had Shit. It. It's probably them, them books, them laws is probably still on the books. Well, listen, brother, I thank you for <laughs> trailblazing, kicking down the doors to fight for freedom of speech so we can get out here, man. And get and our act money. Like a donkey, and bitches can suck cucumbers today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, but real spill, though, bro. I think that, you know, without sacrifices that were made by people like you, you know what I'm saying, that people like me would not have, you know, such. Uh, illustrious career So I really do appreciate it You're a motherfucking legend In my eye my Now God. Out of your legendary career Man how many albums Have you recorded My official number is 20 But it's, it's 20 a, albums A lot of stuff happening there A lot of compilations A lot of guest appearances A lot of God damn you know, 20 albums 20 solid albums Like Mixed master released albums <laughs> So let me ask you Which which one of those albums If you had to pick one That you feel like was I guess a a a highlight of your career that kind of opened up new doors of success for you. Which album would that be? Well, the, the album that um, that sums up the the whole first part of my career okay. is album number ten. Getting it, getting it while the getting is good. Okay. Now that album was. The end of an era for me where I was working with a, a team of producers. Okay. We, the Dangerous we, Crew. Yeah. We was, okay. We, you know, we had a keyboard player. We had a guitar player. Right. Bass. Um, my man Ant Banks was yeah. you know, programming and, and, and mixing and stuff. And we just, you know, I, I, I make music. I'm in, I'm in the studio. on the, we, we do it. It's just our little crew. Right. And we probably did about four or five, two short albums. And okay. a bunch of other albums in our crew. But we had a sound. And that was a sound that uh, people know and love that sound. That's right. So um, that was... that. Album number ten was was perfectly. It sounds like what 
the whole time we was trying to do. Yeah. And we finally got to it and we did it. But then, you know, you get to a certain point with a certain crew. Mm-hmm. Everybody got a little bins. Everybody got a little house. Everybody got a little Everybody crew. wanted more. And it, I ain't going to say that it, it was more, but everybody want to be they they own man, you know? Right. And it's like, man, we got a good thing. Let's keep going. I'm the boss. Yeah. And they like, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> nigga, you know, nigga. I mean, one of the homies was like, "Man, I just, I just need a hundred thousand right now." I said, hundred thousand, that's cool. I, I get a hundred thousand. He go, um, he go. All you gotta do is this, this, and this. You had a hundred thousand. Like, no, I wanted up front. Up front. I'm like, nigga, you gonna get it in with no recoup in the net. Just give me a hundred thousand. Give you a hundred thousand on the cool. But you know, it's it just it, everybody see how the money be split up, and sometimes it, it's they affected by by you going to buy two jet skis or something. Anytime <laughs> you count another nigga pockets. It's yeah. a bad decision to follow. So then I would say coming out of that, coming out of that era, I stepped back. I, you know, some of us still stayed together. We kept kept the funk going. Right. But I think um, Little John and the the when he gave me Shake That Monkey and Blow the Whistle on right. two different albums back to back. Right. That was like a whole new career for me. Right. Like I was at a point where I was too short, short dog, freaky tails. Uh, getting it like you know, right. I had I had like six platinum albums and four gold albums. Right. And here come Lil John, my shit should have been that should have been the story. That was a great story. Right. Here come Lil John. I'm like man, I like I like the way this dude beats. I like this dude energy. Right. I took Lil John. I, I got a tour with um, uh, the Hot Boys headlining. Okay. As the Hot Boys. Right. And it was uh, UGK. It was mystical. It was me. It was it was a whole little crew. Right. I took Lil John as like a, you know you let somebody open for you. Right. He wasn't even famous. Right. I, I let the nigga close for me. Right. Because of what he what he used to do in Atlanta and do it. had an incredible energy. Yeah. So I would do my whole show and then we had that song. Uh, what the fuck you gonna do? Nigga? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, um, that uh, what's that shit? Couldn't be a better player than me. Okay. Even if you fucked every day of the week. That's, That's right. Big in Atlanta. So I would break, do that song with him, and the crowds would go crazy, and then I would just leave, and this nigga would just take him to a frenzy. Just turn up, and, and you know, early on, I knew that Lil John was a. Uh, he needed me to get in the game, right? But I needed them beats. Yeah, you <laughs> so, needed that song. So I was like, I just, and it was a different energy because I think that 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 uh, blow the whistle and what's the first one? Shake that monkey. Shake that monkey. Those were the first two times I heard Too Short in the club. In the club, yeah. Little you know John. I mean? Little they John. were the first times I heard a Too Short record playing consistently in the club. And that's that's and on the radio. That was the Little John Connect. That was yeah. the, that was the new career. Yeah. I got a whole fan base now that go. Shit, too short, all about shaking your ass and then like, yeah. I'm like, not the early days. <laughs> the early days was about talking shit Man. And, and some bass and riding around in your car listening to it. That's real. You know what? So aside from uh, uh, Life Feel Too Short uh, and Short Dogs in the House, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the one album or the two albums I think of yours that really really stood out to me in my childhood and in my teenage years. Uh, get in where you fit in, mm -hmm. and cocktails. And that was in that little run I was saying with yeah. the crew. Cause I, and and uh, I listened back to them albums, man. And the, the, I got to ask you though. Wait a minute yeah. before you get into that. Yeah. So is bitches still coming up short, fucking with too short? For real, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 ain't, ain't no ain't no cash app, ain't no negotiating, none of that. Hey man, you to the hey man, you sent us on a real tangent, man. Thinking we was on some pimp shit, man. I, and I actually, I have a very 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 short lived career as a pimp. And I tell you, okay, so I was staying in apartments. <laughs> and I was listen, I was a crack dealer, like that's what I did. I sold dope. That's you know that was my thing. I was a fifteen year old crack dealer, and so in the apartments. You know, Section 8 motherfuckers just move in and out all the time, man. And motherfucking, um, it was a girl that had moved there from Milwaukee. And she stayed in the building next to me. Now you stand outside just sitting around selling, selling dope all day. So she will walk past me, and she might buy a little weed or something and keep on moving. Uh, but one day she say, hey, you know, you know anybody who, you know what I'm saying? I turn tricks. You know anybody where I might be able to, you know what I'm saying? And I say, you turn and then, like, one of your songs just, I was like, oh, this bitch choosing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 15 years old, cuz. No real, hey, real spill. All right, so the only real, real pimp that I knew that, that, that I could approach about turning me on and showing me the rope was, if you remember my partner, Cap, mm -hmm. his okay. brother, Camp. 
Okay. Okay, so I went to camp. I say, hey, man, got the bitch, bitch chose on me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to put her down, man. I need to see, man. You know, he say, all right, cool. I tell you what. Meet me on Saturday night. I'm going to put her with my main thing. I'm going to have her walk around, show the ropes, and then, you know, at the end of the night, we break bread. I say, okay. Sound like a plan. So Saturday, I got down, put on my motherfucking snake skin boots. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, get, I get me a motherfucking button down shirt, man. Some nice slacks that were heavy starch, and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we go <laughs> and we go over and we go. And I take her over to uh over to uh to my partner B house. We meet camp. Him, uh, the girl and his girl, they going on. I think he sent them to maybe Gentleman Club or some shit like that. They making their round throughout the night. Me and Camp riding around in the drop vet, you know, talking pimp talk, sitting around, kicking it with all the pimps. We get a call probably about three hours into the night. He said, hey, what? A, how, how the girl doing? Huh? What? What you mean? What well, damn? And so I said, what happened, man? He said, man, the bitch ran off. Uh, <laughs> I say, God damn, bro. He say, yeah, man, the bitch ran out. My girl say she ain't seen her since goddamn by 1130. I say, well, damn, that did it for me. That's when I learned I didn't have the patience to pimp. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 I went and picked my goddamn crack back up, man, got back in the trap. It's a, it's a real psychological game, man, you know. I, 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 seen, um, I seen somebody uh, aspire to be a pimp. Uh-huh. Went to an OG pimp. Right. And said, teach me how to pimp. Right. And the OG was like, you sure you want this game? Right. He said, I want to be a student. Teach me how to pimp. Uh-huh. So he started telling him how to pimp. Right. And my man's, um, he applied his lessons to the woman who loved him. His, mm. chick, his chick he was with at the time. Like That's a bad move. His ride or die. So he, 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 you know, she was aspiring like him. Like, they, they, they wanted to get in the game. Right. So they get in the game. And I remember, um... He used to make her work out of the strip clubs, mm. so that was like easier, you know, than right. just, just moving around. So she she was one of them chicks who'd be at the strip club, and then at the end of the night she'd go party with somebody and get some extra money. Right. So she's still coming home with with something decent every day, and she like here, daddy, bam. Right. But at Uh-oh. some point he looking at like he loves her, so at some point he's realizing <clears throat> that this woman I love is getting dicked down every day, and she consistently. Come, and then they started messing with him, so he tried to grab her and say, you know, let's get back to other things we was doing. They always had money. Right. Like, let's get back to our other hustle. This ain't, this ain't the life. She was like, nah, I like, I like I this like shit. I like this. <laughs> so literally, like, this nigga got torn in between his heart Damn. and the game. Damn. And she stayed, and he quit. Damn. And the nigga ended up, like, like joining the church, and, like, he was he, – he felt bad for what he did to her. Damn. So pimping does have a heart at a certain point. I mean, point what, time. what if what if you what if you turned out a little young chick, like she's just like you know eighteen, fresh out of her mom and them house. Okay. And you, you know you turned her onto the game. Right. And then she go out there and get killed or something. That's, oh no. You, you got to live with that. No, no. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm just saying you got to live. That's You're what, right. That, like pimping ain't just some you shit. Right. You like bitch, put it in my hand. There's a whole a whole lot to go with that. Yeah, you are right. And now I, speaking of that, because you get into now this is this is very this is interesting because I think when you scratch beneath the surface of what this shit brings about the game, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> does pimping get lonely? Uh, the facade probably gets a little lonely because you got to put it on. You it's got to always be perfect. You know, iceberg slim. Let me tell you. Yeah. you know, he got his name from just uh, having that cold look on his face, that expressionless look. Right. Nobody knows what the fuck you're thinking and what your next move is. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be lonely inside your brain. But at the, uh, at a lot, a lot of pimps try to keep it uh, solo, you know, right. and not be around a lot of bullshit. But then other cats got to show it off and be out in the open. So, yeah. you know, you got to man, it's, it can't be no lonelier than being a rapper. You know mm. what I'm saying? When you like, well, see now, pimping. I'm talking about like you know what I'm saying. Just kind of got there living day to day. Cheat the cheat, just you know what I'm saying, the lifestyle. And everybody has had a moment. Everybody who has a girl, who has an old lady, has had a moment. Say, man, you know what, man, fuck this shit. I'm finna live like shout dog. And then <laughs> <laughs> break and, it off, bitch. And then get and then guess what? Like, you know what I'm saying? That one night where a motherfucker don't come through, you got them sending that motherfucking how or either got them a holiday roll around like Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know some shit. You like, ain't man. No tur- ain't no turkey, just you hoes. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> just hoes. You, you ain't no fucking turkey. <laughs> <laughs> None of them hoes can't cook. You got, <laughs> you got motherfuckers. Y'all eating McDonald's Chicken on Thanksgiving. Chicken pot pies yeah, and backwoods for yeah. Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? I had a homeboy, man. He um 
He only pimped one hoe at a time because I don't think he never could really get two. Like, mm. he, he wasn't his game wasn't you know I don't know. Yeah, so, he couldn't walk with you gum at the so same he, time. So I've seen him go through probably like four or five hoes over like five year period. Right, but you know when you only got one hoe, right, and you lose it, you got to go find another one. That's right. That's a lonely period that. right there. That, <laughs> that nigga, hey, that nigga go from like riding something nice. He, he, every time he lose a hoe, he lose his car. Damn. He lose like everything go down. Nigga like got to move out of his spot. Shit. He, he kicking cans and shit. So this like, motherfucker that hit rock bottle like six he, times. Then he hanging around me. I, my, my hustle keep going. He like, man, I got to give me a new hoe. <laughs> like, like, ser- 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 like singing the blues. Like, nigga, like, like looking for a plug. Like nigga sad, man. Nigga pushing up on bras and they ain't, they ain't fucking with him. Damn. And he... Like spend two three months trying to get back in the game. That's, shit, that's, man. But that, I know some other pimps that nigga like it, fuck that ho, shit. Hoes is always filling out applications to them, you know. Yeah, always. It's now, always now. The, now that 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 part of the game, like with the the career that you had, the legacy that you built up, man. Would would, would show dog ever get married? Uh, well, you know, man, I'm fifty three now, man. I'm I'm my a lot of nevers. Ain't, ain't so much no more So right. I ain't gonna say never But I tell you I I lived and died by that PFL Like that player for life Yeah Like I I went through some phases In my player career And I'm like You know You look at the game now Sure With the whole You know I walk in the club As a respected player Right Right And the game is so fucked up now These little bros are still like Hey you know They flirting with a nigga And yeah. I'm like you know Little bitches still like me And <laughs> Then the bitch say uh, You got cash app what? I'm like, bitch, I'm not cash out. You know? <laughs> I, I, I thought you not. So it's like, it's it's a whole percentage. You just like, man, ain't you heard the albums? Yeah, the, but it's a whole number, like a large percentage of motherfuckers out there that's like, it's it's not, it's not a surprising interaction to go, let's go kick it. How right. much you gonna give me? Right. Like, nigga, right. what? Who that started shit. this shit? <laughs> These hoes used to hang out just because they wanted to hang out with a player. They That's hung real. out just because the nigga had some good weed, just because the nigga had a fly his house. Yeah. They, they wanted to hang out with a nigga because the nigga had a good personality, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Not cash out. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, who, 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 what, what part of the game is that? I can dig it. But see, the, 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 the question I'm trying to get that, because I'm sure, you know, because you know, I'm married, and you know what I'm saying? So other people in here who married, really the whole room probably. Married. I don't know about the guys holding the cameras. Uh, like, does Shout Dog have a desire, like, to, to find a soulmate and build with a woman? Like, the Shout Dog, hey, is that energy even in there? Like, does that shit even exist? 1,000%, yeah, no doubt about it. You know, Word. Uh, I'm not a cold hearted pimp, man. Okay. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually a, a hell of a songwriter because people be like, uh, you know, like, I, I'm. I'll be dating like somebody's little sister. Okay. And this nigga be like going through hoops to get her to fuck away from me. Like, <laughs> show got my little sister. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, she just it ain't even like that. She like right. he ain't like that. But they, they you can't you can't listen to them songs right and figure that shit out. You know that's real. So, so you know, yeah. Um, but throughout I, the time, I'm sure you have met somebody that you kind of felt, I, and then you the game was like, man, hell no, nah, nigga, we pimping. I've been in I've been in every scenario you could think of, bro. I've been to the I've been with the woman who was like, "Nigga, I love you because you a player." Like, Damn. Call your other bitches. Let's all hang out. Damn. I, I've been with the, the 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 two girlfriends that was like accepting this shit, like whether we all together or you know. See, I'm I think gonna... Blueface think that's something new. I think you know what I'm saying. Blueface oh, think he doing something new. You know. What yeah, I didn't. I didn't had you know family night with all you know. Y- y- y'all know I'm dating all y'all, right? Yeah, we know. We know. So I, I I've been doing it like that. So then, um, never one that you feel like, damn, that's the one that. No, got I was away. just about to get to that. I'm okay, like, I'm and, sorry. and throughout the, my career, my rap career, yeah. When I first got hot, I had a girlfriend, so I've always like, you know, got that super. It ain't. I never do it for the looks per se, right? I, I you know, bad bitches is a thing. It's, it's a it way is. of life. It is. But it I, is. I, I, I've learned at about the age of 25 mm-hmm. that there are some things bigger. Like you do have these connections, right? With uh, certain women come in my life and they stay for like years, and it's just like it's a it's a friendship connection. Right. That they understand who I am and what I'm doing. Right. And I tried, I tried, bro. I tried to uh, settle down. I even tried. I, one time, I think I was engaged for a hot minute. What? Like what when, album came out in that during that time? That's probably like 1999 or something. <laughs> but it, it made sense. That's right. If I told you the whole story, it made sense. But what happens to me every time is that um is I get into a good place and I commit, I get ready to commit. Yeah. And then I get fucked up by like primetime TV or, 
you know, these routines. You get it, and I'm yeah. I'm always getting the fucking phone call that nigga is popping over here, <laughs> and that over here might not just the grass be up, is greener. It might not just be up the street. Over here it might be like, bro, get on the plane to Ibiza right now, like right now. Your ticket already paid for. Damn, <laughs> you know, what I mean, damn. And you sit there, love going, got to wait. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't I, you know, you have, you have regrets. Like, okay, I get, I get a call from Snoop Dogg one day. He like, bro, go to the airport and come to uh, France right now. Damn. And then I go, man, I can't just drop everything and go. But then I hear the story two weeks later about what was going down. Right. And I'm like, bro, I should have I should have left. Damn. I could have rearranged some things. Like, it, you know what I'm we saying? We could have pulled that off. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? That's so, in my repertoire. So I don't like to live with regrets, man. So I, I've, I've always been that guy who just go. I go. That's like, real. Like, I would I would be in love, bro. And I'd break up with Why my- Why not take her with you? No, nope, I was about to tell you, I'd be, I would be in love and break up with my girlfriend for three days just so I can go to the Memorial Day weekend fun thing. God And then I come back on Monday or Tuesday and be like, I don't hey, know. Hey, hey, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home. Yeah, man. But I, I don't know if you remember, I used to, in Atlanta, I didn't used to like hang out with a, a lot of dudes all the time. I had a crew. Nah, you had, nah, you, you, had, you, had, you, had, you had a pack on. I, it was a pack on. I used to keep a bunch of ladies. Pack of wild ones. I learned early on. That a nigga didn't need security if he had like ten women with him. Right. Nigga, no tough guy, nobody right. wants to come in and fight that guy. Right. Like there's no threat. Like right. literally, like that's my nigga. Look, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Send that nigga a drink. <laughs> <laughs> man, the shit is definitely. And I was gonna tell you earlier my kingpin philosophy, man, about about what my young cats don't have. Uh uh-huh. They got guys like you. That they can call and get a little opinion or, or some advice. But the, the kingpins, man, you know, I, even in my rap rap career, when it wasn't about kingpins, right. it might be about some city politics. Okay, when you had politics in Houston before you went and pushed up, right. you went to the the bosses and said, "No, that's what I didn't do. I didn't they, do that. They knew. Nah, nah, nah. For real, I really. It was really as simple as I got out of jail." I heard that, you know what I'm saying, somebody was speaking ill on my name. So then I started saying shit, and I put out some records that were way more jamming than the records that were out that they were putting out. And it caught on. But they oh, the OG stepped in at some point and said, I, yeah, I'm don't, get, don't I, let it go no I, further. And I'm going to get to that. So so what happened after my records came out, then they put out some more records. And in they record, they mentioned waking my son out of a crib with a gun. So then at that right. point, right, right, right. I said, okay, so we pulling up. <laughs> so we was already headed to Houston, so we just have, you know what I'm saying, we pulled up, and she, we wanted smoke, and that's what we, you know what I'm saying, that's what it was. So after we leave uh, the rendezvous, um, I get a call. Now, I don't get a call. Actually, my homeboy Clay, my big homie Clay, yeah. he get a call, and Clay say, uh, hey, hey, Jay, Jay Prince called call for you. He wants you to come to his, he wants you to come to his spot. Mm-hmm. I say, what? He said, we got to go. <laughs> we in Houston What the fuck we gonna do We got to go So I said Alright bet And I don't know What he calling me for Like I don't know What his temperament is I don't know how he feel About what's going on mm-hmm. And so I get there And uh, I was only allowed One person in You know what I mean So me and Phil Went in uh, R.I.P. Big Phil and, and so Phil waited outside I went in In, 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 in Jay office And uh, And you know the opposition was also in us sitting down. So when we sit down, um, Jay say, so now what's this going on, you know, <laughs> about, you know, all of this back and forth shit going on between y'all? And so I say, hey, man, that nigga said he was going to uh, wake my son up out of crib with his gun. And so he looked at bro, he say, you said that? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, then he was like, oh, well, he said this, that, and other. And I said, I tell you what, Jay, we could just walk in the bathroom and see who walk out first. And then he said, he, he looked at bro, he was like, you with that? And then bro was like, nah, nah, man, we just need him. You know what I'm saying? Just let it be over with. And so he said, well, and so then Jay looked at me and said, well, look, Bro, I say he just wanted to be over with, man. You done did enough to get killed anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I say, man, all right, cool, bro. And then we walked out, you know what I'm saying? We walked away with that understanding. But I, I felt like I was being sent for, like, on some mob shit. I was like, man, I done seen good fellas. I know how this shit go. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Jay do that, man. Jay used to, have, he used to um, I, I did a lot of Houston. So he used, yeah. to, he used to send cats to get me at the club. 
<laughs> at my shows. Right on. Like, like. It was almost a privilege, though, man. Somebody like, yeah. hey, man, Jay wants you. Where he at? Absolutely. He, he's sitting over there. Okay, you walk over there. But they like, Jay wants you. Where he at? On the other side of town. Right. All right, let's go. <laughs> like, whatever it was. Man, he has definitely been, like, you know, a, a an example of what entrepreneurship look like and leadership look yeah, that's, like. That's what you I'm, know what I'm saying? That's what I'm getting on is the whole leadership factor yeah. of, of having that. But pride wasn't such a big issue then. Like, when Jay sent for me. I wasn't prideful about it. Like, man, who the fuck you think you're telling me to come somewhere? Like, I feel like that's how motherfucker kick it now. You know what I'm saying? It's so much pride and ego involved. Who the fuck they think they are trying to sit down with me, man? I don't need to sit down with no motherfucking body. You know what I mean? And when that come into play, it's hard to develop a, a, a clear understanding. Yeah, I said I, I don't know, bro. I I, I still I'm, I'm still on that social media is magnifying everything and making okay. us know know about certain things we didn't knew, used to know about. That's right. Uh, I I I just said there's a lot going on before that man. It was a lot going on that wasn't that wasn't making um the news or making a, a the, the 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 rumor mill and that. And it was it was a lot going on. That's real. A lot, That's of, real. A lot of scenarios on a on a on a need to know basis. Yeah, that things that happened in Atlanta, things that happened in Oakland, things sure. that happened in L.A. They happened. They was happening, but around rappers and around right. rap crews. But it wasn't. It wasn't in the publicized. Media. Yeah, the things was happening. Yeah, like for real, them things was was popping and flowing. And but it, you know, we used to know how to we used to know how to do stuff. And then uh. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to be bold with you. Okay. So I'm with my homies. Okay. We got a problem. Gotcha. And it's a real problem. In what city? Any city. <laughs> so we got a problem. We got a problem, right? And okay. they like, all right, here go the plan. Uh, we're going to walk short that way. Uh, y'all two go over there and um, act like y'all ain't with us. Y'all y'all take a, a pack of niggas. Y'all go walk short that way, and then we're going to walk right at them. Right. Or whatever. It might be any kind of plan. Gotcha. But the one thing was... They secured the bag, right? You know what I mean, right? And and because everything is gonna be like that with shorting them. So now I'm I'm a, I'm somewhere being seen, right? And the movement starts away yeah. from away from the fanfare. So it ain't never shorting them, right? You know what I mean. So the one thing you just said, you said the one thing about it, and and this is what I noticed from what you just said. This this example, this description. The one thing about it was there was a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> sat and said, hold up, man, let's think about think this. About it, yeah. And let's figure, let's weigh our options. Let's figure mm-hmm. out the, through the pros and cons, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the benefit versus the detriment with the best way to execute what we our desired goal. Mm-hmm. And motherfuckers ain't doing that. It just feel like motherfuckers out there, just a bunch of people just doing shit and, and waiting to see what happens next. You know what I mean? So I seen some gangster shit one night that I, I, I really respected. I don't know who it was. If they listening, they be like, "That was us." So <laughs> we was at a little, little hometown, little East Oakland club, little bitty ass spot where, okay, pretty much every nigga in there was an East Oakland nigga, right? And some niggas from um, Richmond, California, was up in there. We knew that they was in there, and, they, and some of our little homies, the little homies was um, trying to, they was trying to show off. Okay, they was just picking somebody to fuck with just because they were the little homies and they was in that mood. Gotcha. And they picked them dudes. Right. And they got a hold of one of their homies and was giving them the business. Uh huh. A lot of shit could happen. Right. A whole lot of shit could happen. Them niggas was um, outnumbered by the whole club. The whole club would have been against them. Who so, who who you talking about the the the, the ones the niggas who... from the Richmond niggas. Okay, gotcha. And the nigga went I I the nigga went out to the car. Mm hmm. Got the car, left his homie in there getting his ass whooped. Mm. And it probably was about three or four of them. They was just kicking it. They wasn't bothering nobody. We the OG. We watching the little homies is, is uh, on their ass. Mm-hmm. They giving the nigga the blues. His homie comes in. You can see that the, they opened the club door. Right. The car's right there. It's a little ass club. We see the car. Okay. It's a nigga. One nigga come in. One nigga stay in the car, whatever. One nigga come in. This nigga lit the club up. What? He could have easily shot at somebody. Act bad. This nigga. He, he 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 got everybody's attention. Yeah. He said, "Get the just get up off of him." So right. he, he got a, he got a choice. If he go like that, yeah, you know it's coming back at him. Sure. So it's he, they thought out the plan. He, right. That nigga came in there like Rambo, nigga, like rah, rah, get, got his homeboy up out the mix. Like right. you got twenty niggas on your homie. Right. You one nigga with the gat. Right. Another nigga out in the car. Right. They dragged that nigga out, threw him in the car, went home. I was like, <laughs> you know, but you got a, the nigga. Somebody would have had to get a leg or something. 
But the nigga who came back in with the gat though, this his whole. The, the, he, he thought nigga, that out. And he came to get his homie, man. They might yeah. they might have hit that boy in the head one time and you right and you know you right. It could have fucked him over. So you know, I just think like uh, situations like that. Yeah, you know? proper plan that prevents piss poor performance. I always. I say seen that. a little nigga whip my big cousin ass one night <laughs> <laughs> about his about his old lady. What he asked my cousin, he said, man. And he said, bro, man, that's my old lady you danced with. It's my cousin's birthday. Uh, and he just danced too provocative with this right. nigga lady. But she was dancing with him, though. But it's a big nigga. He kind of was holding her a little bit. You know? <laughs> it was, it was kind of rapey, kind of rapey. A little oh, bit, a little shit. bit, a little bit. He was, yeah. he was a big nigga, well, big, shit. doing that over. This nigga, big nigga. Damn. So he asked him again. He said, bro, that's my old lady, man. You know, come on, bro. Nigga wouldn't stop dancing with it. Nigga went out and got that car. <laughs> Damn. And then came in there, quick little nigga. Yeah. Bow with the bottle, bow like damn. <laughs> Look, bow, 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 grab this lady. <laughs> that was the, that dance was over. It's over. Let's go. <laughs> because I went there leaking on his birthday. Damn, needing stitches on his birthday, man. Little nigga told you, man. You know what I'm saying? It's I my think, old lady, bro. I think these kinds of examples and stories are things that you know we need to we need we need to pass on to the next generation. Cause I think most of the time, people in this generation, they. And mind you, I'm not trying to be critical, and I'm not being judgmental. You know what I'm saying? I love and respect and, and, and salute the generation for the most part for the things that they do in a positive light. But I'm just saying, if anybody wants some game, here it go. Now, the things that we did, they came, one, from a lack of option, or two, as a part of a strategy. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just a motherfucker just out acting. For no reason, you know, what I'm saying? and not expecting any consequence. In a world of cameras, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's way easier right now to be caught for anything, from spitting on the street to smoking to selling dope to whatever the fuck you're doing, nigga. You got. It used to be you have the snitches and the police. Now you got the snitches, the police, the cameras, the social media, the internet. You got everything. It is against you and. and so that means you got to be damn good. I remember when I got locked up, man, they told me, man, motherfucking, uh, I guess he was a goddamn investigator, detective, whatever the fuck he was. He said, man, we can make a thousand mistakes. You make one, and that's your ass. <laughs> you only get one, you, damn. You, you know what I'm saying? I think that, like, that's, that, that's some shit that motherfuckers, I feel like, need to kind of take a little time to press it. And now, here, what we do here, man, we have what we call... The word of the week. Okay. Right? Now, the word of the week is usually a word that I kind of, you know what I'm saying, find in in in, ver- in, in the vocabulary uh, and, and apply it to the conversation of the day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the word of the day is procurer. Procurer. Mm-hmm. The definition, a person who obtains a woman as a prostitute for another person. Mm-hmm. A procurer. All right. The officer pulled us over and asked, have you fellas been unlawfully using controlled substance or been a procurer for prostitutes tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so, I did, hey, man, that's my word. It's, I, 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 tailor, I, I handpicked that, man. I feel like it was tailor-made for this particular conversation. It's just for you, bro. And I appreciate you, man, for kicking it with us and got down sharing your stories. And, for sure, for sure. And even more than that, for kicking down doors and blazing the trail for us to be able to live at at least thinking we pimps today, you yeah, know what I'm, I'm saying. I'm an OG that want everybody. I want everybody to get a good long run in, man. I want to. I want to see. I want to see my young homies having fun, enjoying the life, right? And I want to see you be OGs too, man. You know, and, and soak up the game, and that's then, real. and then pass it on. Hey, man, that's real, man. Recycling. Love and respect, and, and me personally, man. I appreciate you for just being so cool, down to earth, and laid back with me as a young nigga, man. Who. Nobody knew. You ain't know me from jack shit. You know what I'm saying? You dapped me up, said what's happening. You know what I'm saying? And, and it wasn't never no Hollywood, you know, no fake-ass rap shit, man. So I, right. I, I always appreciated that, man. So thank you. <laughs> My guy. Love. For sure. Hey. So Hamilton Road, man. You understand that? And so with that, man, we going to leave y'all last here, man, to marinate on this shit, man. Chew on it till the next time we, to the next time we grace your presence. This is Expeditiously. King. Ha, 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 ha.